Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the San Diego Seed Company YouTube channel. Today we are talking about brassicas or cruciferous or coal crops, how to plant them, everything that you need to know to go from a little tiny seed to a huge head of broccoli or cabbage or cauliflower. You're gonna learn it all today. Before we get into that, I learned a quick fun fact that I just wanted to share real quick. I grew up hearing these always referred to as coal crops. Now, if you talk to Brigitte, she calls them brassicas. It's basically the same thing. What I learned is that coal is the old word for cabbage, and you still hear coal in coleslaw, which I thought was pretty cool. Now that you know that that fact, you can put that in your back pocket, tell it at parties, and just be the life of the party, I'm sure. What are brassicas? Brassicas are basically a family of crops that include uh, mustard greens, collard greens, cabbage, cauliflower, coleslaw, no, not coleslaw, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. There are a ton of brassicas out there. Scientists have taken one plant and split them up into a variety of different crops. Today I want to focus on three of them and they're the three biggest. The reason I've lumped them all together is you pretty much do the same exact thing for all three crops, but there is one crop out of the three that is much different than the other two when we get to harvesting and I'll talk about that at the end. So the varieties that I have planted today are Steve's Tender Early Green Broccoli and Waltham 29. We've got two types of cauliflower as well, the Amazing Cauliflower. Uh, this is actually the pelleted seed which is super nice and then the Snowball Cauliflower. This is my first year on the Amazing. I'm excited to see how the taste difference is between Snowball and Amazing. Then for the cabbage we've got the Copenhagen Early Market and the all-season cabbage. Okay, so let's get into how to grow these. I'm gonna do a quick overview of seed starting. We have tons and tons of videos on our channel about how to seed start, but I'll just give you the quick and dirty seed starting 101. As you can see, I've got my tray. I filled my tray up with seed starting mix or potting soil. If you do potting soil, you're definitely gonna want to sift the soil that you put on top of the seeds because potting soil can have bigger chunks of wood in it. Anytime you have anything big on those, sometimes it can inhibit the germination rate. And if you don't wanna waste three to five days or five to seven days, uh, you want all your seeds to pop up. Quick rule of thumb about seed planting depth, it's always double the width of the seed. So if you look at a brassica seed, they're really small, so you only want to put just a barely a dusting, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch of soil on top of the seed. You can always check the back of the seed pack if you're worried that you're putting too much or too little. Okay, so once you have your tray planted, I am going to put these under grow lights inside, but I don't turn the lights on the first three to five days. I check them each day. As soon as I see even one pop up, then I'll pop the lights on. Remember, seeds do not need light to germinate, but once they do germinate, they're going to be yellow until you get light on them, then those uh, leaves are going to turn green. So once all your seeds pop up, the rule of thumb is four to six weeks, but that's just a rule of thumb. I would consider how hot is it outside, how much space do you have, are your warm season crops out of the way. There are so many factors from when you take a plant from the their starting tray and put them out into the garden. That is just something that comes along with experience, but here's a couple things to think about. If it is too hot and the sun is too harsh, you're not gonna wanna put cool season crops out in the garden. Wait until, definitely plant them in the morning, but also try to wait for a cool spell because if you put them out, especially if you've grown them under grow lights and haven't hardened them off, you're gonna put them out and fry. On the other end of the spectrum, you're also not gonna wanna let them get too big because then they get root bound. And what root bound means is the roots grow in the little tray in a circle, and then they're less likely to venture out and get all of the nutrients nutrients and water that are in the garden. Now you can break up the roots a little bit to encourage them to venture out, but that just stunts the growth. So it really is a balancing act of deciding when you're actually gonna put them out. I'm gonna let you guys decide that, and season after season, you're gonna get better and better and better at it. One thing that is definitely a must do is hardening off. If you're growing things underneath grow lights or in window light, you don't wanna put them directly from inside to outside without a couple hours each day of bringing them out into the harsh sunlight, putting them back inside, and just acclimating them to the weather 
and to the harshness of the sun. Before we head out into the garden, I did want to say this video is a giveaway video. So we are going to give away three packs of seeds to three lucky commenters. You're going to get a broccoli, a cauliflower, and a cabbage. To enter, like the video, subscribe to the channel. But the most important thing is leave a comment and then subscribe to our email newsletter because that is how we're going to announce the winner and that's how you're going to get your seeds sent to you. Here we are in the garden and I'm going to show you how to plant. Whether it's a broccoli, cabbage, or cauliflower, they are all pretty much the same. If you have any questions about spacing, always look at the back of your seed pack. But I know, because I plant them every year, you're going to want to get them about two feet apart. Now one thing that could be confusing is there's a thin two and then a final spacing. With a lot of crops that you're just planting directly into the ground, you're going to thin them and then the very final spacing might be different from how you're going to thin them because you want to thin crops and look for the most prolific, the best, healthiest looking ones and you're going to leave those and take the other ones out. But for this, since we've started them in cells, we know exactly how many plants we've got. We're going to put them directly at two feet. So let's show you how to do that. So I've got some great looking uh, broccoli starts here. This is the Waltham 29. If you aren't yet to the seed starting stage of your gardening career and you're still buying them from the big box stores or nurseries, that's completely fine. What you may find when you take them out of their cells is that something I mentioned earlier and that's that they are root bound. This is not root bound. You can see that they're not bound up. They're just good white healthy looking roots which is what we want. Now that brings us to the type of soil that these crops need. Almost every crop needs well draining soil with organic matter like compost or manure added that is light and fluffy and well draining and that is exactly what we have here. If you can tell I just turned these beds over from the spring crops. I've added granular fertilizer, I've added compost and I've raked it flat. Then the last step is to add the mulch back in. So we go to the dump, we get a big truckload of mulch and we come and we'll cover all these beds. Typically I like to do that before we plant because it's just easier to spread the mulch when there's not plants here. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and plant these so you can see how it's done. One thing that you're definitely not going to want to do is plant into dry ground. When I turned this bed over, we added tons and tons and tons of water when I opened it up to add the compost. We're looking good in terms of moisture here. I am going to look for this emitter which I know these emitters are one foot apart. So I'm gonna plant one here and then skip two and plant the other one here. And I'm just gonna dig a hole like this. This, uh, as I go a little further deep, this is looking a little dry. So the last thing that you wanna do is put a plant into dry ground. But one thing you wanna look out for when you are transplanting is you wanna get its new home at the same soil level as its original home, meaning you don't wanna bury the stem for brassicas like you would with a tomato or a pepper because you don't want this stem to rot. So this is looking really good. This part takes a little bit of time and that is watering in. You can see depending on the drainage that your soil has it's going to pool and try to run off. We're just going to go ever so slowly. So what will happen if I only water this little tiny area and everything around here is dry, this dry soil is going to sop up all that water away from the roots and that's the last thing we want. So I'm going to take my time, water the whole area get it really 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 nice and moist and give myself and this plant the best opportunity to grow. So I'm just gonna come down here two feet. Like I said I know my emitters are a foot apart so I could use those or a lot of tools are two feet apart so I'm gonna come down here two feet. Now a lot of you are thinking oh my gosh that looks so far apart. You're wasting so much garden space. Well if you've ever grown coal crops before you know that they get huge so that's why you want to really pay attention to the spacing on the back of the seed pack. You're gonna get very small stunted unhealthy plants. The main one being there's not enough water and nutrients to go around. Also shading. Uh, they're gonna shade each other and they just can't grow to their full potential. So definitely these three coal crops with the broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, make sure you keep those two feet apart. Okay, so here's what happened. Shot the video, it's way too long. We're gonna split it up into two sections. But my family and I are like Arrowhead, so I couldn't go out to the garden and do some sort of transition, so I'm gonna do it here. So stay tuned for part two. You're gonna learn about pests, days to maturity, row cover, and harvesting. So make sure to check that out when it drops.